The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm not out here on my own. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He gives me sleep. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to restful waters. I'm not thirsty anymore. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. He shows the right path. Even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, it may lead through dark valleys, but it will come out the other side. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I'm not afraid anymore. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your arms and ready, even on the darkest days. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I will not be abandoned, you will come. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I will have more than enough. Every day will be full of goodness. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Your mercy will not run out. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will live with you forever. I'm not out here on my own. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, Melissa, we're gonna be late. I'm coming. All right, let's go. Oh, wait. Church is online today. Oh, cool. Hello, my name is Kelly Street, and this is my wife, Melissa. We're so happy you're here to worship with us on our online service. On behalf of our family here at Faith Lutheran Church, welcome. welcome. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, shall lead the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. 
As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, Andrew shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Good Lord, show me the way. Good morning, and welcome to Worship Today. It is good to have you here. If you're visiting or new with us, please be sure to make a comment or send us a message so that we know that you're here uh, and can get to know you better. Today's Good Shepherd Sunday, a day that we hear in the 23rd Psalm and John chapter 10, this chapter where Jesus is the shepherd and we are the sheep, and Jesus leads us through the gate, through himself, to the gift of abundant life. A few announcements for today. First, I wanted you to know that Jacob Smetters, uh, our choir director, is inviting all of us to submit pictures of our families. He's uh, arranging a wonderful song uh, that's going to be uh, sung and recorded, and he wants to have a slideshow of pictures of our faith family and others on there. So any of you uh, are, are welcome to share a picture to be a part of that wonderful music presentation. Members of our congregation received letters last week for stewardship, our gifted to serve focus, inviting you to serve and to ask, how do you see God in your service and in the service of others? So look for that letter if you haven't received it yet. If you have, please respond to that and send them here into the church by next Sunday. Again, thank you for joining us for worship today. We are the church, gathered around God's living word, fed and nurtured by his grace. Let us give him thanks and praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And, and also, also with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. We gather today to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and to be nurtured in faith. When and we, we worship, worship, we are, are the body of Christ, Christ gathered by grace, strengthened, strengthened in God's word, fed with, with God's mercy, mercy and sent out in love to our neighbors. Today we remember that Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. In Christ we lack nothing, can fear not, and our cup overflows. In our worship together, in God's living word, read, sung, and shared, we receive and live God's gift of abundant life. Help us to give bad thanks and share this promise with others. Let us pray. Good shepherd, you call us by name, and we know your voice. Open the gate for us, that we may enter and bring others to know your blessings of abundant life. Help us to be shepherds that nurture relationships with you and one another. Give us conviction to make you a priority each day. Give us humility to care for our family friends, and community, and fill us with awe and awareness of your presence. Amen. And now you're invited to share in the ministry of peace. We share a sign of peace with one another in your homes. Place a hand on your chest, shake a hand, or give a hug. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace be with you.
A reading from Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to him. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and destroy. I came so that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for worshiping with us today. As you know, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. So I was going to talk a little bit about back in the day when the shepherds were out in the field, they had a gadget that looked like this. It's called the shepherd's hook. So they could use it in a couple different ways. When they needed the sheep to move a little bit faster, they would kind of prod them. But if one of them would happen to fall down a crevice, they could also use the hook and pull them up out of it. So, <laughs> well, look who's here. Me. Hi, Wendy. I stand along on the word of God. The B -I -B -I How you doing, Wendy? I'm doing okay, I guess. Yeah? Are you having a good week? Uh, pretty good. Good. How about you, Mama Jean? Doing really well, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I have a problem. You do? Yes. What's your problem? Well, I was reading the Bible. Yes. The Bible. Good for you. And, sorry, I hit hair in my mouth. I was reading the Bible, and I was reading sheep and gates. Yeah? Well, how can God be both of them? Wow, good question. Well, well hi, Tom. Oh. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, Wendy. Hi, Tom. Did I hear you're confused? Yes, I'm so confused. Oh, Why man. can how can God be a sheep and a gate? Well, today we learn that Jesus is a good shepherd. That means he cares for his sheep. Do you know who God's sheep are? Who? Oh. Us. We're God's sheep. We are? So Jesus is our good shepherd. Jesus cares for us, moves us along when we need moving, and lifts us up when we fall and need help. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Really cool. But also we hear that Jesus is a gate. A gate opens up and lets us out to find good food and water, and a gate closes to keep us safe. So Jesus is also a gate that gives us that gift of abundant life so we can go out and live and, and have good food and be safe and be a part of God's flock. Wow, does that make sense? Wendy? That is amazing. It's almost like he's the door to go get cookies. Uh, well, well, maybe. No, not it. Maybe. Oh, maybe for us, but, but the sheep, they go out and they find pasture and clean water, and they get the greatest gift of all. Right. They get to be a part of God's, God's flock, just wow. like us. Wow. Did you hear that, guys? God's flock. Cool. That's right. Cool. Can we pray? Yes, let's pray. Let's do. All right, hold your hands. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for being our shepherd. Thank, thank you for being our shepherd. You love us and care for us. You, you love, love us and care for us. And thank you for being a gate. And, and thank, thank you, you for, for being, being a, a gate. gate. You protect us and lead us out to food. You protect us and lead us out to food. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Steve. Bye. Bye, Steve. Ah! Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. These signs have been on our church doors for six weeks now. For six weeks, we have closed our doors on Sunday mornings and moved our worship services online. It's been so hard not to see one another and be together in person here in this place for worship and Bible studies, fellowship events, meals and meetings and other activities. 
I've just missed having you come by and visit, just stopping in so we can sit and chat. It just seems wrong to close the doors of a church. But I'm sure you've heard the phrase that when one door closes, another opens. How very true. Closing these doors has forced us to open a new door by bringing our ministry online. And when we opened that door, we discovered something amazing. Our understanding of our worshiping community has expanded beyond these walls around the country to include you, family and friends and visitors, people from our church, other churches, or no church. We welcome you. We open our doors wide into our expanded understanding of community and church. Today in the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us that he is the Good Shepherd, and then he tells us, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus has this doorway of sorts, a passageway that allows the sheep to come in and go out and find pasture, a passageway that brings us to abundant life. For many of us, this is what the church is all about. It's about open doors and welcoming others and celebrating this abundant life that God has given to us. But unfortunately for others, the church is more about closed doors, about not being welcomed, not being included, and not being accepted. Unfortunately, things can be done and said in the church that may drive others away. If that's you, I'm sorry, and I want you to know that I'm glad you are here and that you're not alone. It's happened to me before as well, and unfortunately, it's probably happened by me. Probably inadvertently, I've said things or done things that have closed a door in the faces of others. So know that it happens today, but it also happened in Jesus' day as well. What comes before John chapter 10? Well, yes, John chapter 9. But what happens in John chapter 9? Well, Jesus comes across a man who is born blind. And his disciples ask him, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Because the conventional wisdom of the day says that our suffering is the consequence of our sin. And so this family lived not just with the blindness, but with this judgment that the suffering that this man faced is somehow because of their sin. Slam! A door is closed in their face by judgment. So Jesus opens the door. He tells everyone that this blindness is not the fault of the man's sin or his family. And then he spits in the dirt and the ground, makes some mud, rubs it into the man's eyes, and heals him. He can see, and a door is opened. He's welcomed back into the community, and they celebrate that he's been restored into wholeness together, into this gift of abundant life. But not for long. The religious leaders get a little bit self-righteous, and they feel threatened, and they drive this man out of town. Slam! The door is closed again. And again, maybe you felt driven out in the church in the past. Even while experiencing the grace and the love of God, maybe you felt the church giving, uh, closing a door on you, saying that you are not welcome. If so, know what Jesus did here with this man as he was driven out. When Jesus heard about this, he ran after him. He went searching for him. And when he found him, he opened a new door. He opened the eyes of this man's heart to see who Jesus truly was. And the man worshipped him. And what comes after John chapter 9? Yes, you're catching on. John chapter 10. So right after, a door is closed by judgment, opened by God's healing mercy closed by religious self-righteousness and opened again by God's grace and love. After all this, Jesus says, very truly I tell you, I am the door. I am the door that opens. I am the door that opens the way to still waters. I am the door that opens the way to green pastures. I'm the door that opens, yes, to valleys in the shadow of death, but I am with you. I walk and make that journey with you. I am the door that opens and brings you to tables of abundance where your cup overflows 
and grace and mercy follow you all the days of your life. I am the door that opens and welcomes you into abundant life. Well, what a joy it is to open our doors to you today and to welcome you for worship. But know that another door has opened for you as well. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, opens the door and has come that we may have life and that we may have it abundantly. Amen. Like a shepherd, he 
Together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you at this time to reflect on stewardship. Think about how you've been blessed by God's abundance and generosity. And to think, how can we respond in love and in service and in giving? If you'd like to give to support the ministry of Faith Lutheran Church, you can mail a check or bring it by the church uh, any time during the week. But also you can give online. If you head to our website, you can use the giving app there to give as well. If you'd like to think about ways to serve, uh, as I said, members of our congregation received letters uh, inviting you to reflect on service and think about how you can serve in our ministry here together. All of us, think about where have you seen God in your own service, the ways that you've been serving, but also where have you seen God in others and in the service of others? Today we hear from Craig Miller, member of our congregation, who's going to share with us where he sees God. Good morning. Uh, when first asked where do I see God, uh, I thought, wow, uh, the places that I see him day in and day out are, are too great to list for a, such a short video. For me personally, um, since the weather has been getting nicer, I've been trying to get up in the mornings, uh, sometimes before the sun comes up, which is often difficult for myself, but uh, get up in the morning, do a daily devotion, and pray and meditate and I simply have to see the beautiful orange and blue pastel sky to know that uh, God is sitting there next to me uh, drinking coffee listening to my struggles uh, and also that he is uh, an Illini fan uh, but of course we also see God in the service of others in the community uh, the donations of time and money at the local food banks I see God there um, to the healthcare workers uh, and the first responders on the front lines I see God in their service. Um, God is easily seen uh, there with those individuals. But I also see God in service at Faith Lutheran. Through Pastor Gene and Jacob, um, Steve Varble putting this video together, uh, and the readers and the greeters, uh, and even Wendy, uh, I see God through their service. Uh, they have allowed us to worship together uh, and stay connected to our faith family while at home. Uh, God is here in their service. While it may be somewhat difficult uh, to help others and have them see God through us uh, in our service through the, in the community through this pandemic, um, there are ways you can help that others can see God through you. Uh, you can offer to buy groceries for someone who's not able to. You can buy someone's coffee. Um, you can write a letter or bake cookies for other people uh, and just show them that they are loved. Um, we can serve many ways at faith also. Uh, if you are unable to give monetarily, give the gift of service. Uh, as each of you has received a gift, use it to serve one another. That comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, at Faith, I serve along with seven other wonderful members. Um, right now, it's difficult. We're making tough decisions, especially how the church is going to move forward. Um, that's how we serve. Um, but there are many other ways to serve. There are opportunities to serve during worship. Um, you can help, uh, once we're all worshiping back together again, assist with communion, like Barb mentioned last week. Um, we need readers uh, and greeters. It was wonderful, even through worship last week, to see Diane and Rick uh, being the greeters from Colorado. Uh, other than worship, there are many other ways to serve uh, and have others see God through your service at Faith. Um, you, there's outreach. You can do a storybook project or help with and uh, be a part of the storybook project. You can deliver meals uh, with the doorbell uh, dinners 
uh, outreach project or by joining a committee which um, aligns with your interests uh, and gifts. God is there with all of those services and many others. Uh, when asked to serve, I often think of a mission trip that I took in high school uh, to Rio Bravo, Mexico. Uh, our t-shirts and our motto uh, was from Isaiah 6, 8, which says, uh, when, when the Lord asked, whom shall I send? Uh, we would always stand up and say, here am I, send me. Um, so when, when thinking of what can I do to serve, what can I do to have others see God through my service, the Lord is asking you, whom shall I send? Don't be afraid to stand up and say, here I am, Lord, send me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may you receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.